Okay, guys, uh, we are going to go ahead and start reading um, from our social studies book. This is fourth grade, by the way, so fifth graders, uh, unless you just absolutely miss my voice. I understand, uh, but you don't have to watch this video. Uh, my wife is here as well. She's off to the side, so if you hear stuff in the background, there she is. <laughs> uh, so if you hear something, that might be her, or it might be any number of the cats or uh, Sally downstairs, uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So, uh, so. Social Studies book, okay. and we are on the first Texans, which was page 106 to 109. Um, I know a lot of you are probably already thinking, like, this is back at the beginning of the book. Like, we we got to the last uh, <laughs> we got to the last part of the book last week, and so now what are we going to be doing? Okay, well, what we did at the beginning of the year, because I had just assumed that we were going to have plenty of time together was we were going to be uh, going back at the end of the year to cover all of our Native American groups, or not all of them, but a lot of the Native American groups. And we would just be able to, uh, you know, we'd be able to learn about them. And then there was actually going to be a project that we were going to do at the end of the year. But unfortunately, since our end of the year is now just going to be done at home, we're going to have to find something to do, uh, something different to do instead. Um, so, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start. We're on page 106. Uh, fortunately, if, uh, if you need me to stop or anything, you can just pause it. So, let's go ahead and get started. First Texans. I will know the possible origins of the first people to arrive in North America and Texas. And we've got eight vocabulary terms for this week. Ice Age, Archaeologist hunter-gatherer, quarry, descendant, culture, artifact, and agriculture. If we look at the picture at the, uh, at the top of page 106, uh, we can see for, uh, some of our first Americans hunting huge animals that died out and became extinct long ago. You see some mammoth and uh, some more animals in the background as well. So. <clears throat> Little is known about the possible origins of the American Indians who first lived in North America. Some scientists say they arrived tens of thousands of years ago during an ice age. An ice age is a time when huge sheets of ice and snow cover parts of Earth's land and sea. During the last ice age, the oceans shrank. People from Asia could walk to North America across a strip of land that linked the two continents. This land bridge is called Beringia. We kind of talked about this at the beginning of the year. Hopefully you kind of have some memory of it. Uh, but as ice froze the, uh, froze the oceans into gigantic glaciers, the water level of the oceans went down, 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 down. And as that happened, more and more land was able to be seen on Earth's surface. And so with more land on Earth's surface, we were now able to have people and animals walking all over the place. The first Americans. These ancient people were hunter-gatherers. A hunter-gatherer is a person who collects plants and hunts wild animals for food. They may have followed herds of huge animals, such as woolly mammoths and, and giant bison, across the grassy plains of Beringia. Scientists have other theories or ideas about possible origins of the first people who may have come to North America. Some think that ancient people from Europe crossed a part of the ocean that was frozen hunting seals. Or perhaps people sailed along the coasts in small boats. There's actually a lot of information that's come out in the last couple of years about uh, just different, play, uh, different things here in North America that people have started to find. And so... Uh, right now, it's actually uh, it's actually likely that these people crossing this land bridge weren't the first people. They were definitely going to be some of the first people. In fact, that's where most of uh, we we assume that's where most of the groups, uh, most of the Indian tribes that eventually end up on North and South America. That's where they came from, from Asia and uh, parts uh, you know over around Russia, uh, but there is actually proof that there were people before uh, these Asians who crossed over into the United States and in, or in Canada, North America, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and so 
it's just hard to tell exactly who came first or who was here the longest or where people were just because it's 10,000 years ago or actually rather it's uh, it's 12,000 years ago maybe even 15 or more thousand years ago and so there's no good way to know exactly what's happening because unfortunately we don't have time machines possible origins of the earliest Texans the first American Indians of present-day Texas were descendants of the earliest people who came to North America a descendant is a relative such as a person's child and grandchildren the ancient Texans probably reached the Texas Plains more than 15,000 years ago. They too followed and hunted huge animals, mastodons and mammoths. If you remember, uh, there, there, uh, there's actually evidence of times when some of these um, cavemen, they're not quite cavemen, but they're pretty close to cavemen, uh, times when these people would just drive these animals off of cliffs just because it was really easy to hunt that way. Mammoths aren't exactly the smartest animals. I mean, you know, elephants are actually pretty smart, but, you know, when you're afraid, you do stupid stuff at times, and so that's exactly what happened here. These ancient Texans adapted to their environment. To adapt means to adjust or change. Bones, ashes, spear points, and other artifacts provide clues about how they lived. An artifact is an object made and used by people. Uh, just as kind of an example, so anytime you see little like arrowheads or like a pot or something that was made a long, long time ago, and they just randomly found it somewhere, then that is an artifact. Scientists called archaeologists study the, <clears throat> excuse me, study the culture and artifacts of early people. They say that hunters in Texas threw darts or spears using atlatls or long sticks to kill large game. Back at camp, people used the animal's meat to feed many families. They used the animal's skin to make clothing and tents. Tools were made from the animal's bones. So if you remember, most of the time it was way too hard to hunt down stuff. And so when you did manage to hunt something down, you of course were going to use every single part of it because why waste anything when you could use it for something useful? All right, let's go and look at our next page. The ancient people trade resources. As the people followed the great herds across Texas, they discovered resources that they could modify. In the red mesas of the Texas Panhandle, they found flint. Flint is a hard rock that people shaped into points for spears and arrows. At first, they gathered the flint from the hillsides. Later, they mined it from quarries or open pits where people mine or dig up rocks. Today, the area is known as the Alabates Flint Quarries National Monument. Tools made from Alabates Flint have been found across the Southwest and the Great Plains. Archaeologists say this shows that the people traded Texas Flint far and wide. Trade made it possible for people to have access to resources that could not easily be made or found where they live. And so that's why we actually see lots of evidence of things like seashells and like this Alabates Flint that it appears in places where it shouldn't show up. I mean, you know, in some cases there's uh, they've found seashells and things like that often deserts. I mean, yeah, at some point uh, that desert probably was covered with water and so there would have been... Uh, there would have been some kind of sea animals that would have left those shelves, the shells, but um, in most or in a lot of cases, at least, some of these things were actually traded to these people who lived in the desert or who lived in these different areas. A new way of life. As the last ice age came to an end, life in ancient Texas changed. The great beasts died out. Smaller animals such as elk and bears took their places. Uh, we don't typically think of elk and bears as small animals, but compared to, you know, giant sloths and these huge mammoth mastodons that, uh, that roamed the world, yeah, these were definitely smaller animals. <clears throat> this changed the culture of the people who had once depended on mammoths and giant bison. Culture means way of life. A new culture took hold. People continued to hunt animals, but they turned more to plants for food. 
they modified their environment and learned to save and plant the seeds to grow food. This change to agriculture began about 2,000 years ago. Agriculture means farming. The main crops were corn, beans, and squash. People settled in small clusters to be near their fields. They dried food for later use and stored it in woven baskets and clay pots. They traded their baskets, pots, and food for other goods. That's it for today, So, or at least for our social studies lesson. So, have a good day.